This is not my first ever testing of vitamin C. Another product that I have tested out is Vichy's ampoules, these lovely little glass ampoules where you crack it and it makes a satisfying champagne pop. And I have tried out that vitamin C and it was pretty good. You know, no complaints about it or anything like that. Then I switched to a really other nice product that I'm gonna tell you about in a second that I just finished. Um, that is not a drugstore product, but I'll tell you about that. Uh, but what we are gonna be testing is these today. So yes, go ahead and check out my video maybe after this about the Vichy ampoules and you can see a before and after that I did for that. Um, they cost about the same price as this one. So this will be interesting to test them, right? So Vichy is like a French product, well-known sort of brand higher and Neutrogena is just an everyday drugstore product. You'd find this at your local drugstore, at CVS, at Target, at Walmart, right? It's everywhere. So here we are, I'm opening this up and it's got these sort of like cute little capsules inside. Uh, seems to be like a plastic container and they look like almost like little whales. They're shaped like little whales and they have that kind of gooey, plasticky look. They look to me like bath oils. I think I saw Dr. Dre's video on this and she did, she talked about it, but I don't think she did a full before and after type review, which is what I'm gonna do here. And I don't know texturally if they're gonna feel like those as well. So I'm just opening this up. This is the first time I've ever opened this. It doesn't have much of a scent. I like to, sn I like to sniff all my products. <laughs> it's not fragranced as far as I can tell. And let's have a look here. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. So it feels like those old bath oils. I haven't seen those in a long time. I don't know if they still make them like that, but back in the 80s, 90s, they were a thing. You would put them in the bath with you and they would get thinner from the warmth of the water and you would squish them and oil would come out. So it feels pretty much the same thing. We're gonna test them in a second, but let me tell you a bit about my skin first because I think that maybe if you're comparing for yourself, you might wanna know where I'm at to help you figure your stuff out. So let's talk about that briefly. So I am 44 years of age. I have sort of dry, normal skin. I have postmenopausal skin, if that helps you at all. I don't have too much, like my skin's actually in really good shape right now. I'm almost hesitant to try out a new product. I mean, I always have little bits of hyperpigmentation here and there. I think I have a, a, a little spot of acne down here. I mean, but it's looking pretty good. My skin actually doesn't usually look this good and I attribute it actually to this Vivier vitamin C that I've been using for a long time. This seemed to help a bit. This is a Canadian pharmaceutical brand. It's very expensive. It's up there with SkinCeuticals and we've all known and heard if you've been doing a lot of research about the vitamin C world that SkinCeuticals is the absolute best on the market just in terms of the research that they've done, just in terms of making the vitamin C that they use stable, because um, that's an issue with vitamin C, right? It oxidizes, it turns kind of an ugly color and theoretically it doesn't work as well. I use this, I quite liked it. This is a 10% vitamin C uh, formulation and it's empty now. So I'm not necessarily saying to go out and buy it. I never made a video on this just because I felt like it was so expensive and it's kind of a niche product being in the Canadian marketplace that I did and I got it for free as well. And I'm also paid for these Neutrogena vitamin C out of my own pocket. So this is totally not sponsored, this is just my opinion on both of these. So I like this, but I just can't afford the $180 that I think, Canadian anyway, that I think that this costs. It was perfectly nice, but you know what I think made the biggest difference? I was struggling with acne uh, a while ago and just my skin looked terrible, typical winter skin. The Retin-A. I was not really that into using Retin-A because it has a tendency to, as it does for everybody, really just slough off a layer of skin and whoo, uh, it was it was a lot, but it did a great job in sort of re and it's dead. This tube has died and gone to Retin A heaven. Um, <laughs> it did a great job though, like it really did a really nice job. But I'm not gonna keep using it forever. I felt like it did a nice job of clearing my skin up, and you gotta know sometimes when to stop, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna stop now. So I've just been using this vitamin C, but this is empty now. So therefore. I was able to buy these. Where I live, it's around $40 for this container, not cheap. I know that if you're in the US, it's significantly cheaper than that, but it's not really an inexpensive product. This was on sale though. It was like, I think $12 off or something like that uh, at the drugstore. So I was like, I'm gonna buy it. So anyhow, here we are. Uh, my first time using it, I suppose you just rip this little tip off. It looks like a little whale to me. It's pretty cute or a vitamin E capsule or something like that. Uh, okay, so we're gonna pop this. So it's kind of stretching, I guess. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's, oh, oh. So it's this kind of formulation. It's, I did watch Dr. Dre's video on this, but that was a while ago. So it is not the liquid that I'm used to. What I'm used to is sort of a translucent, oily kind of drop. So this stuff is, 
oh, okay. It's white, it looks like moisturizer, huh? So an interesting thing that I read on the package that I wanted to tell you guys about this because for me now we're coming into the warmer months where you need really to stay on top of the sunscreen is that apparently it says here on the side is that you cannot or you should not mix it with, with titanium dioxide uh, sunscreens. Let me just double check, let's see. Okay, for a hot second I thought I imagined it. It did actually, it does actually say under warnings for external use only, do not ingest not compatible with sunscreens containing titanium dioxide. So that means you can use your chemical sunscreens, but you can't use your physical sunscreens. And that kind of sucks because my favorite uh, sunscreen is actually a physical sunscreen. I like to use them. I, there's one that I really like, and maybe I'll do a review about that another time. Suffice it to say that I like it under foundation. It seems to work almost like a primer. It sort of spackles the pores and stuff like that. Anyhow, enough talkie. Let's just finish up using this. So this is 20% concentration and I think SkinCeuticals I believe is around 15 and I could be, but I could be getting that wrong I'm pretty sure it's not as high as 20 uh, and I know that the Vichy I think is lower as well it's not 20 as far as I recall hopefully I'm not getting that information wrong if I am I'll just correct it on the screen but does that matter well you know you'll hear a lot of dermatologists say that the percentage really is not that important it's really the delivery, how it's gonna sit in your skin, and formulations that have a lower concentration can sometimes work just as well. I'm not sure if that also holds true with vitamin C, but I guess we're gonna find out, right? <laughs> okay, right away I can tell you that, so I, did, I use this on clean skin. I haven't used my moisturizer. I can tell you right away it's actually tingling in a way that I've not ever felt another vitamin C tingle. I feel it kind of like I don't want to use the word burning, but it definitely feels like something's going on and it feels a bit like it's hot right around here, which I guess is to be expected. Tingling is to be expected when you're using a vitamin C. So here we are. So that's day one. I'm going to come in a little closer so you can see my skin, some of my areas of concern, um, but whatever, right? I'm 44 and I have skin texture and that's fine. So I've got this zit coming on, sorry guys, I know that's gross. I have some hyperpigmentation around here, some light freckles. Uh, yeah, you know, I've got the fine lines, I've got the 11s here, all that stuff. Please excuse the state of my hair. I know it's looking kinda, kinda dry and witchy. I've been testing out Pantene, um, the Pro-V, which is like one of the top selling shampoos. Did you guys know that? Uh, so I'm testing the, sh the shampoo, and even though it says, and the, and the conditioner, even though it says daily moisture, <laughs> listen, just go and watch that review. It'll be ar out around the time that this one comes out. So if you're curious to see what these top sellers are like, a two week review, that is what I'm just started. Uh, so um, we will see, I will not pass comment on those right now, but I will say that my hair continues to look dry. We'll see what the full thing is. Okay, so I use that all up. That seems to be quite a generous amount. Could I have stretched this to two? days instead of one. I don't think so. I think there was just enough for one. And interesting, it's like a white moisturizer, like a really thin moisturizer as compared to anything I've ever used before, which has been, you know, a sort of, like I said, an oily serum and a drop. There's nothing in this, maybe just a tiny bit, but yeah. So this is new. So listen, I'm going to keep going. I may or may not check in at the halfway mark. We will see, um, but I'm definitely going to use this up. So all you've got to do now is just just keep watching. Just keep watching. I'm going to show you what happens uh, along the way and give you the full before and after. I'll also try and get some photographs um, closer before and after shots. So that'll be next. Just under the halfway mark with this um, Neutrogena Vitamin C, these capsules here. And you know what? I had an idea and I thought I would show you guys on video, which is like, what are these made out of? If you're weird like me, you want to know the composition of things. And sometimes you like to experiment with these kind of things because you're just super curious. Never lose your curiosity. Well, I was not sure. I was pretty sure it was like that weird gloopy stuff that they make and made bath oil balls out of back in the day, which dissolve when you take a bath with them, like the oil squirts out of them and then the capsule itself dissolves into some sort of gooey kind of mess. And I was like, is this plastic or is this some sort of waxy stuff that's gonna melt? Well, I decided to test it out like the true strange person that I am. I immersed it in some water and I just left it to sit for a little while. And let me tell you, about 30 minutes later, the whole thing dissolved. So it is, I mean, not entirely, there are like bits, but but it's not plastic. It dissolved into something, some sort of waxy type stuff. Same, it's the same as the bath oil capsules, is what I'm trying to say, the shells that those bath oils used to come in. Yeah, and it made this like 
kind of goopy substance when I was done with it. So um, they are degradable. What they degrade into, I don't exactly know, but if you're curious, it's not plastic exactly. It's 30 days later. This is now an empty, and I've gotta say, I really enjoyed this product. I'm gonna give you a little hint about what you can do though to extend a little bit the use of these little tiny things that I like to say look like little fish. So when you, when you pull these off, and by the way, you should twist and pull. I was just straight up pulling and it was like, harder to do, but if you twist it, that creates tension, that's easier to kind of snap it off. But what I wanted to say is, when you detach this, you've got this tiny little tail, that actually does have a tiny bit of product in it. Enough actually I found to just cover my nose area, so I would just go ahead with this and then whatever was left, I knew there was enough to cover my nose. I mean, your mileage may vary, but I would squeeze it out and then the last little bit was good to just cover my nose with. I liking it. Now, I can't say that with vitamin C, I have ever seen a huge difference in my skin. It's not like I've ever used it and it's cured. Unlike Retin-A, which really does change my skin a lot for the better, but I have stopped using it because it's kind of drying and I, I feel like I'm just trying to maintain. You know, I'm trying to maintain my gains when it comes to uh, the post Retin-A stuff and this really helped me do it. So it was super valuable to me in that way. These are very portable, so that's nice. They ha they're they very easy to put on, and I gotta say, I like the formulation that Neutrogena use. I've never used a moisturizer style, like in an opaque white kind of cream. It's always been these sort of oily formulations, liquidy formulations that I find harder to put on for whatever reason. Maybe it's the te texture of my skin or whatever, but loving this. Really, really think this is a good product. That stinging that I got initially uh, went away. Never really had it after the first day, so that's good. So let's talk though about what I think it did in terms of before and after. Um, I'll come a bit closer, and I did take some video closer to the window. I feel like it's done a really nice job of maintaining my skin. I don't think it's improved anything hugely. I in fact got uh, a zit here, so now there's some hyperpigmentation here, and that one that I was complaining about turned also into hyperpigmentation, and you know, I think it's unrealistic to expect that vitamin C is gonna get rid of that. For me, it's just time, you know, even, even in the Retin-A, really, it's just a matter of time and waiting for your skin to just turn over. But I gotta say, I really like this product. Will I keep using it this summer? I don't think so, because here's the thing. I really am missing my mineral um, found, uh, not foundation, sorry. I'm really missing my mineral SPF that I like to put on and I can't use it with this, right? Because as we looked, it says that you're not supposed to use this with mineral formulations and I don't like the chemical one. I just find that it's just, for whatever reason, maybe it's the other products and I'm not gonna go out and buy like all new foundations just to match with, I'd rather just, you know, to match with this, this, this product. I'd rather just stick with what I like and what works well for me. So no, I'm not gonna buy it now, but I think in the winter time, I will switch back to it when I'm wearing just less SPF in general. Um, in the winter, not to get into a, be you know, and, and people have differing ideas about what to do here, but I find that my I'm hardly ever outside. It's very, I'm not gonna get into the whole detail how bad it is here where I live, but it's very, very overcast here in the winter. And I have like just SPF usually in my foundation that has always been enough. I have never gotten a tan here in the winter, we just don't get enough sun for my particular skin type. Of course, if you live somewhere sunny, you need to be wearing it all year round, most definitely. I love this. I don't think it's a huge difference, but I think it's enough to say that this is a good product and I would purchase it again if I wanted to add vitamin C into my routine. It's done a great job of maintaining my skin. It hasn't eased up any fine lines, wrinkles. I think I look the same pretty much. This is me with no makeup on, just the vitamin C. Use the last one, so this is an empty now. This is empty, this is my last one. Really like this product, would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a sort of stable vitamin C because I don't know, not everybody wants to commit to like $180 or whatever it is of the highest end vitamin C, I get that. Maybe you're not even like gonna use it regularly enough to make it worth it for you. Just get this, it's really, really good. So I liked this, I did like the Vichy vitamin C in the glass ampoules, but I just felt that that was very wasteful with all these little glass ampoules, although I will say, it did last longer than this. This just does last 30 days. It doesn't last any longer. The Vichy vitamin C ampoules, the upside of those was that you could stretch them. You could stretch them for like two days, three days. So the supply there is actually probably cheaper per unit 
or per day as opposed to this. It definitely did what I wanted it to do. It was easy to use, a real no-brainer, especially if you're maybe starting in the vitamin C world, this might be the one for you. I liked it. All right, everybody, I hope that was helpful and I hope you will consider liking and subscribing. I'll make more skincare content like this if, if you do. I, I make these and they tend to do okay for me here, but I'm never sure, right? Like I know that people know me for hair stuff, but you know, as I get into my mid 40s, oh, well, I am in my mid 40s, as I age, I like to be on top of like trying new skincare stuff. So if you're into that, make sure you like and subscribe. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for spending your time here with me and we will see you soon.